When you start walking out in the hills and the mountains, everybody that you meet will tell you that you just must carry a compass and a map. So you go out to your local shop and you choose which one you want to buy and you buy your new compass. What happens then? How, how do you actually use a compass with a map? Well, the good news is that it really doesn't take long to become used to using your new compass and your map. And it makes going out into the hills much safer and much more enjoyable. Today I want to go through the two most common things which compasses are used for, which is how to find out where you are and also how to plan a route and then follow that route. Before we start, I have to mention that in virtually all areas, there's always a difference between the direction to somewhere if you follow your map and the direction to the same place if you follow your compass. This difference is called magnetic declination. Later on in this video, I'll go through how we make adjustments so that we can use our map and compass together, regardless of the amount of declination. I do get asked quite often what type of map and compass I would recommend to someone who's learning to navigate. With maps, it's quite simple. I would suggest you get a map with a scale of around 1 to 25,000 or 1 to 24,000, as these have lots of information on them. With compasses, it's not so simple, as there are so many different types. The best advice I can give is, if this is your first compass, you should get a simple base plate compass from your local outdoor shop, and most importantly, don't spend too much. These are the two compasses I'll be using today. The first is the Silver Expedition 4, which is this one here, and we've also got the Sunto M3. Now, they're quite similar, um, the main difference is how you use them to deal with magnetic declination, which I'll go through in a moment. They're called base plate compasses as they have this clear acrylic plastic plate, which is really useful because you can see through it when you're using your compass with a map. Most compasses have this magnifying area so that you can view small details on a map. And they also have a ruler which runs along the edge, um, so you can measure distances between two places on a map. The main point we want to notice today is firstly the direction arrow which you use to point along your direction or at something that you're taking a bearing from. On the top of the dial there's a small mark called the index point. On the Sunto this is just a small indentation at the top of the dial and on the silver it's a small line built into the dial. The index point is where you read your bearing, you, you read the number of the bearing. Then we have the bezel, which is the rotating section with the numbers around it, around the edge. The numbers are your bearing. Inside the dial there are red lines called orienting lines and these are used to make sure your compass is pointing in the right direction when it's on a map. In the centre of the orienting lines is a large red arrow called, well not surprisingly, the orienting arrow. This is used both when you're taking a bearing from a map or a land feature and also when you're taking or following a bearing. There's also a magnetic needle which spins inside the dial. Whichever way the compass is pointing, the red end of the needle always points towards magnetic north. So those are the five things that we need to concern ourselves with today. There's an awful lot of other things on the compass, but for now we'll just stick to these five things. The direction arrow, the index point, the numbers on the rotating bezel, the orienting lines and arrow, and the magnetic needle. So that's the parts of the compass that we're going to be using today. So now we get to the main bit. How do we actually use our compass to navigate one of these things? So the first thing to do is we need to take a bearing from a map so that we can follow it. So to do this, let's have a closer look at your compass. As you can see, there are numbers from 0 to 359 running around the circular bezel. These numbers on a compass are called bearings, or some people call them an azimuth. You can imagine yourself standing in the centre of the bezel, or in the centre of the dial, and if you walk towards one of these numbers, you'd be walking on a bearing. For example, if you were walking on a bearing of 1, 2, 3, you'd be going from the center of the bezel towards the number 123. So you'd be going in this direction. If you were walking on a bearing of 345, you'd be heading this way. A bearing can also be used to describe someone's direction. As an example, from this stream junction here, which you can see on your screen, up to this point at spot 347, 
we're going to be walking on a bearing of 339, 339. Bearings are also useful because somebody can tell you a bearing that they'd like you to follow, so they know exactly which way you'll be walking. To take a bearing from a map, what you do is you place your compass on your map, and in this case, I want to go from the wall junction here across to the grouse butts. So I make sure that my direction arrow is pointing in the direction that I'll be traveling. If I was going from the grouse butts to the wall junction, then the directing arrow would have to be pointing in the opposite direction. But in this case, I'm going from there to there, so I check the directing arrow. That's really, really important. There are so many errors caused by that simple mistake. It's, uh, well, it's a very common error. So what I do is I put the edge of the compass, so it's touching my start point, and it's also touching my destination. So it's there, and then what I do is I rotate the bezel, don't forget this, rotate the bezel until the orienting arrow is pointing directly north on the map. I can check that that's correct by looking at the orienting lines and comparing them with the vertical lines on the map. So here's the vertical line number 64, and as you can see, the orienting lines are running exactly parallel. What I then do is I read my bearing from the index point, and in this case, the bearing is 112 degrees. Pick up your compass, ensuring that you don't adjust the bearing, so it should still be on 112 degrees in this case. Then holding it firm, two hands, and then simply turn your whole body until the magnetic needle is directly over the orienting arrow. Okay, I'm now facing along my bearing. My bearing is at 112 degrees. Then what I do is I will simply walk to something that I can, that I can see that's along my bearing. When I arrive there, I'll do it again, and I'll walk to something else. Don't be tempted to look along your compass and see something on the horizon, because that will never work, because you'll end up, walk, end up walking in a curved arc. Always hold it like this, find something that you can walk to and then go to that. So that's how to take a bearing from a map. A quick recap, put the compass onto your map so that the edge of the compass is touching both your start point and your destination. Rotate the bezel until the orienting arrow is pointing straight up the map. You can check you're doing this accurately by using the vertical lines on the map and comparing them with the orienting lines on the inside of your compass dial. The next thing to do, pick up your compass and you'll be able to read the bearing at the top of the bezel. On a Sunto, that will be just next to the index mark and on a Silver, that will be the number that's above the line. Then, holding your compass straight in front of you, about chest height, keep your compass level, rotate your whole body until the magnetic needle is directly over the orienting arrow. You are now facing along your bearing. So what you do is you walk to something that you can see and then do that again and keep leapfrogging until you arrive at your destination. So you now know how to take a bearing from a map. But what happens if instead of you finding out your bearing yourself, somebody tells you a bearing? They may say, go to the wall junction and follow a bearing of 70 degrees. So what you do in this case, turn your dial to 70 degrees, and then it's, after that, it's exactly the same as if you'd taken it off a map. You simply rotate until the magnetic needle is over the orienting arrow, and then you follow the direction arrow. Obviously, to be able to take a bearing on a map, you need to know your start point and your destination. But sometimes you may not be quite sure exactly where you are. You're not lost, you know, you know you're on this mountain or on this moor side, you know roughly where you are, but you're not exactly sure of your precise location. So you don't have a start point. And if you don't have a start point, you can't take a bearing. So what you need to do is you need to find out where you are on the map. And the way we do this is by looking around the area and finding something that I can see on the ground and also on the map. So in that direction, I can see Rivington Pike, which is um, a very noticeable feature in this part of the world. And I point my uh, compass at it. 
So I'm looking, I point the, or the direction arrow directly at Rivington Pike and I rotate the bezel until the orienting arrow is directly underneath the magnetic needle and I read it from underneath the index mark I can see Rivington Pike is at a bearing of 238 so 238. I look for something else and in the distance over there I can see Noon Hill Slack which is a Neolithic burial mound so I once again I point my compass at Noon Hill Slack keep it as solid as I can looking along the or sorry the direction arrow straight at it and I've got a bearing of 298 so I've got 238 and 298 so now I can use those bearings on the map to find out my location so I know I'm somewhere on this hillside and I can see Noon Hill Slack and I can see Rivington Pike so I know that from where my location wherever I am Rivington Pike is at a bearing of 238 so what I do is I simply rotate the bezel until I set 238 on the dial there and then simply put my uh, compass on the map somehow put the edge of the compass so it's touching Rivington Pike and then simply keeping it touching Rivington Pike rotate the whole compass Ooh, a bit squeaky until the orienting arrow is pointing straight up the map once again I check that it's correct by using the orienting lines I then draw a line on the map so I know that I'm somewhere along this line okay the other thing that I could see was Noon Hill Slack and that was at 298 so what I do is I set my compass to 298 sorry put it in a shot so you can actually see it so that is now set on 298 once again there's Noon Hill Slack so I put the edge of the compass so it's touching Noon Hill Slack which is there and then rotate the whole compass until the orienting arrow once again is pointing straight up the map keep ensuring that at all times that the edge of the compass is actually on Noon Hill Slack so that is now correct and I draw another line on my map so I am now where the lines coincide and from here I can now because I wanted to walk towards this footbridge I know this is now my start point so all I need to do now is put the edge of the compass on the start point and the edge of the compass on the footbridge where I'm heading to so from where I am my bearing 226 to the footbridge so don't forget quick recap find two points that you can see on the map and that you can also see on the ground point your compass at the feature rotate the bezel until the magnetic needle is directly over the orienting arrow and that will give you your first bearing do the same again to the second feature then put the edge of the compass onto your map with the bearing set there and simply rotate it along and then draw a line draw another line and you are where the lines join at the start of this video I said that in virtually all areas there is a difference in the direction to somewhere if you follow your map and if you follow your compass this difference is called magnetic declination the reason for this is that everything on your map is aligned with a system called grid north this is where the vertical lines on your map point to it's up near the top of the earth but your compass generally points towards the magnetic north pole this is a slowly but constantly moving spot which is currently mid 2023 somewhere between Canada and Siberia because the lines on your map which you use to take a bearing by pointing the orienting arrow along and your compass point in different directions we need to make an adjustment to compensate for the declination in your area we can't change the printed map so we have to adjust our compass and the way this is done depends on which type of compass you've got some compasses have a fixed declination scale and others have a semi-permanent adjustment scale you can tell very easily which type of compass you've got just by looking inside the dial where you'll see a series of numbers and marks that run around the edge of the inside of the dial 
Compasses with fixed scales have the numbers at the, t the north end of the uh, dial and semi-permanent scales are at the south end of the dial. So let's have a quick look at how we adjust both types. We'll start with the compass with a fixed declination scale like this Silver Expedition 4. So for example, if you've taken a bearing from a map and it's 220 degrees, the index mark is at 220 and the needle is directly over the orienting arrow. To adjust for declination, you need to rotate the whole compass until the magnetic needle is pointing at the declination marked on the scale. As an example, let's say that your declination in your area is 10 degrees west. You rotate the whole compass until the 10 degrees west on the scale is underneath the needle, like this. Then rotate the bezel until the orienting arrow is once again underneath the needle. If your declination was 10 degrees east, you would rotate the compass until the needle is over the 10 degrees east mark. Then rotate the bezel again until the orienting arrow is once again underneath the needle. Your compass has now been adjusted and to follow the bearing, pick up the compass and again, holding it at chest height, turn your whole body until you're facing your bearing and then follow the direction on the compass direction arrow. Next, we'll look at compasses with a semi-permanent declination scale. Now, each compass manufacturer has a different system for changing the declination on their compasses. As an example, silver compasses have a small screw at the top of the dial, which you turn to adjust the declination. Brunton compasses have a tool-free adjustment, and you just squeeze the dial itself and then rotate it. But today we're using the Sunto M3, so turn the compass over and you'll see a small screw in the base of the dial. Use the screw screwdriver, which came with the compass, so hopefully you haven't lost it. Use the screwdriver to turn the orienting arrow until the south end of the orienting arrow is pointing at your declination, like this. As an example, if your declination was 10 degrees west, then you would turn the screw until the south end of the arrow was pointing at the 10 degrees west. If your declination is 10 degrees east, then you turn the screw until the south end of the arrow is pointing to the 10 degrees east. You can now pick up your compass and follow your bearing. But just a quick point, if you want to take a new bearing from a map, as you've just changed the direction arrow, the way it points, you won't be able to use that to take a bearing from your map in the normal way. So in this case, to take a bearing from a map, instead of pointing the orienting arrow up the map to the north, you'll need to rely on the orienting lines to do this. That's the basics of how to use your compass and your map together. If you're just starting to learn how to navigate, then now is the time to go out into the hills and give it a try. But I would suggest for your first few uh, forays into the wilderness, I'd go to somewhere that you know your way around. That way it will give you a sense of confidence and a, a sense of safety. If you've got any comments on the video, just post them in the comments box and uh, thanks for watching.